and uh, I ended up stealing the Christmas tree out of the um, reception at Chelsea. <laughs> I was just like, wow, we're, we're not, not only are we, no, is this our team, but we're, you know, we're part of this celebration. And they actually credit you with helping the run start. He got on about half eight, about an hour late, sunglasses, <laughs> his hair was all wet, and he walked past, and then Ian Rush turned around to everyone and went, that's why they call him the king. Do you think you'll ever experience anything like that again? Good to see you, Serge. And you. Welcome to Football Music and Me. You've had an incredible career with Kasabian. I can't get my head around the fact that you're now in your fourth decade yeah. of performing. Uh, and you've, you've done the lot. Uh, six number one albums, headlined at Glastonbury. You've won award after award. You've had collaborations with other bands, your own solo projects as well. It's been an absolutely thrilling ride for you. But would you say that Leicester City have given you <laughs> personally an equally thrilling ride? In terms of ups and downs, you've had a fair bit. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so blessed to, like, ha like, Supporting a team that, I mean, the last 10, you know, 10 years, <sighs> I use, I, you know, like literally kind of, you can't get your head around it and, and you sort of go, I can't believe that's the team that you support, you know? Because when you're younger, you sort of go, and my dad taught me, so it's like, right, this is my team. And then you sort of pals... Man United, loads of kids supported United mm. and you're watching them win the league and the Champions League and you're watching Swindon Town at home and you're thinking, why can I not just support someone like that, that like is involved in, in the business? <laughs> end? You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I like Grimsby Town? You know what I mean? The Zenith Data or something. And you're thinking, but, you know, you stick it like any fan, right? You stick at it. Yep. You stay true and... And then down the line, something mad happens, and every team, is, whether it's you know whatever, there's whether it's Premier League or, or even even win the championship, whatever. But you do get the moments of romance, and I, you know, we got the ultimate, didn't we? Like in like the <laughs> ultimate story. I don't, I don't. I'm obviously biased, but I can't. I don't think there's a better. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't think there's a better story. Well, you won't find any disagreement from me when. Um... So I brought a book out a couple of years ago. That's a shameless plug for myself. Here we go. <laughs> um, I was asked my favourite Premier League win of all time. You think of Arsenal's Invincibles, you think of uh, Manchester United's treble, etc. And as an independent sports journalist, I said, no, I will never, ever see a better win than Leicester City of the Premier League. Mm. Because it just... They were so popular amongst non-Leicester City fans. And not anti-Manchester United. It was Arsenal and Tottenham were involved in the hunt as well that year, but it was such a popular win. I mean, you must have been aware of that at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it, we'd come down to London and, and um, you know, cabbies are just, you you get the sense and they were like, I hope you do it, boys. You know what I mean? It's like, every, mm. it was like, it was just everywhere. And I don't know, even like, like you know, me and my pals were saying like, they almost, they almost like felt a set, like they were famous or something. If you told, if you told someone you support Leicester City, they're like, you know, they'd be like, wow, you know, you know what I mean? Like you're in, in this, in this, on the story. So, yeah, it was wild. I mean, the last, I, I want, I want, I want to come to obviously that is the that's the pinnacle. But one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, do you think? I mean, every Leicester City fan was living the dream, and it's difficult to believe that moment will ever be topped. But you never know. But do you think the fact that you supported them from such a young age and you saw all the struggles, I think you were Oxford away where they had to get a result, otherwise they would be relegated. That's the it, fact yeah. you saw them when they were... That added even more to your enjoyment. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Like anything, you know, any, any, you know, football fan, it's like the more you put in, the more time, the agony. But it's all about it. I mean, it's weird because when we went down last season, I sort of... It was heartbreaking, and I think years before it would have, you know, affected me more. But it's like you, you sort of come to the realization that what else you're gonna do? You're sort of you're in now, you know. Not so, even even like those, you just go well. It's not like you're gonna go and support Carve, is it? You sort of go well. We'll just go down, you know. 
drown your sorrows, have a couple of beers, and then you go, right, well, we'll okay, well, we'll start, you know, I suppose we got to get to Preston next year, figure out how we're going to get up there. And, and then, you, you know, and hopefully we'll only have a season down there and, you know what I mean, and it'll be just that little blip, but it's nice to win games again. But it's just a, yeah, it's part of, you just, you, you know, it's, you, you just are, you know what I mean? It's part of who you are and you're never going to go anywhere else. What are your best memories of the early days of being a Leicester City fan? I mean, for me, probably that sort of sort of mid nineties, early nineties, like when I that's the sort of, when I got a season ticket and and I was like, you know, the sort of Brian Little era and and then sort of Mark McGee and then Martin O'Neill. Those playoffs, those I mean, the one that really sticks. The, the playoff games are really stick in my mind, like the Blackburn game where we lost one nil and David Speedy dived. Still to this day, we'll not we'll never forgive that man for, for that. Um, and then the Swindon game, mm-hmm. which you know was three nil down at half time. People, everyone going right. Well, we'll give it five minutes and then we'll just get out of here. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, to get it back to three all and then lose again. And you just think how football is. The work, how much you know it's cruel and old Wembley was like it was a mad place old Wembley wasn't it you know mm. it was sort of with the Greyhound track yeah and it was just a, it was sort of yeah old school like quite intimidating place and then obviously the Derby game to play Derby in a playoff final and to win finally win on the third time was just insane and then the Palace game with Claridge scoring in the sort of final minute. With his socks down. Socks down. Bringing on was his Elko Callag goal. We had like a seven foot goalie at the time. <laughs> never played. And he brought him on like for the penalties. So we were all going, right, getting ready for the penalties. This huge Australian goalie's come on. And then Claridge sort of scores. So they they, they kind of, they, they sort of, they're, the th- they're sort of etched in the memory now. You talk about your rivalries. As you said, you, you know, there's no way I'm going to go and support Cough. But you had trials at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I played there for two, three years. What age were you then? From about under ten to like under thirteen, something like that. Would you face a dilemma if they said, "Okay, we want to take you off"? I used to wear my Leicester socks. I had some Leicester socks, and I used to wear them underneath. Under your forest kit. Under, under my kit, just to sort of know that I wasn't being too disloyal. <laughs> yeah, it was the trick. I mean, all I ever wanted to do was play for Leicester, but they never knocked on the door, so. Uh, you know, it, yeah, when you know when when and at the time, Forest were a decent team. You know, they were in the Premier League, and so it was like, you know, you sort of yes, you want to be a footballer, so you kind of reluctantly go, well, Leicester don't want you, then Forest do. Well, was there ever a stage where you had to make a choice? Obviously, you know, thousands of kids go through the clubs, but was there ever a stage where you had to think about, okay, how seriously do you want to play football? Or how seriously do I want to work on my music? I think I I remember I remember playing for Forest and I I scored I took it round someone and I scored it a toe poke right and the manager went crazy like shouting you don't that's not how you I've scored isn't it so I was watching Babetta and Romario you know what I mean I was kind of coming from that angle and then and I I, just, I sort of dragged me off I got shouted at. I remember thinking then, I thought, this probably is not for me, this, because I was definitely, I definitely th- thought football more of as a sort of entertainment. Like, I was into that, like, I mean, back, this is back in the day when, like, a Cruyff turn was like, no one had seen anything like it, you mm. know, a double step over was like, you were like, you know, God, now the kids just know everything, do you know what I mean? So I was kind of into that. They They would have called me like a luxury player, I think. Be like Berbatov, you know what I'm saying? That was my, that was the way I played, which that that what I didn't quite fit, but then I, you know, I'd get you a goal from nowhere. So it was that was that was it. And I think that that moment, I kind of knew. I thought I don't know if England's probably the English games. It was tough back then, you know, that sort of early nineties. Football was way not, it's different. It's not as cultured as it is. I now, think I'd have been fine. I think I'd have had more of a chance now if I'd have worked. If I'd have, I mean, you could obviously play. You can see anybody. We know that from Soccer Aid and from Soccer AM. You had ability. Who did you want to be? Who did you model yourself on as a player? I mean, I always loved the sort of. I always loved like 
that that sort of I love the Badjo. Roberto Badjo was my sort of boy, you know, and that like he he was kind of like what I thought you know football was all about. You um, so were you, were you tall at that age as well? No, nah, that was weird. I was trying to work this out the other day. My mum and dad aren't very tall. But she used to. Well, I used to drink a bottle of milk every day, so I reckon there's some sort of hormone, <laughs> some some mad cow thing going on. That's like I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> but wasn't tall as a kid. <laughs> what was it like when your music career took off and you became much better known, but you were still going to games, still in the way end as well? What was that like? Yeah, it was great. It was great. We just sort of. We were just desperate for them to sort of take on one of our songs and have it on the, on the terraces, you know what I mean? Like that was always the, is this the week they're going to start a song with using using our tunes, you know? Um, well, what yeah. was the first? They've used plenty. Do you know what? They they did, like like LSF is now, but it's taken quite a while actually to, to sort of get some on the terraces. But they use LSF, they sing it now on the terraces. But yeah, the club would play, you know, we, they used to come out to club for and still do, Underdog, and then... They used to play fire when we scored. They stopped that now for some reason, but yeah. So yeah, it's been good. How much has football and and the foxes been, if you like, a, a release for you from your music career? Because again, obviously you're an artistic person, but there's an awful lot of hard work that goes into have the sort of success that you've had. I think my pals, like I've known. You know, since we were like six or whatever, still now, you know, the connection we have is the is the team, you know. So like, it's like straight back into that. So no matter where I've been, where they've been, what's been going on, that sort of it's like that. that the connect the Leicester City is 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 grounds you in that way, you know. So it's kind of that. That's I suppose that's kind of. That's the strange thing about it. It, it, it. It's not just football, is it? it? It's sort of there's that I don't know, man. That that community exactly, and it's you know, it's a beautiful thing, mm. and, and um, that can be agonising at times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then, like you said, it's sort of it's like they're also like the the agony is what we talk about them. They're the thing, you know, when we when you're all together and you just you know. Remember, there the the stories are. You know, it's not necess- It's not the when the, when we won that. When we, it's like, yeah, when we, you know, the hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? The horror <laughs> show is where you're like, they're the bits, and you know, they're the, they're the, they're the um, yeah. Like, do you, do you think that there are? Par- I mean, I certainly do. But do you think there are parallels between football and music? Um, in that they can bring you the highest of highs. And, and deliver, well, music doesn't deliver cruel blows, but a, a melancholic song or a, a ballad can reduce you to tears as well in the same way. Do you, do you see the synergy? I think so. I mean, I, I think in terms of, um, you know, bringing people together in a, in a sort of arena and then a moment to lose yourself, you know, a moment to just give yourself away. So it's like you go to a gig and whatever, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, life's tough, life's there, there, and you just throw yourself into a show, sing your heart out, shoulders, moshing, you go, you know, you're losing yourself. I think football has the same, I think that, that connects it, where you go to a game and you just lose your mind, you can shout, scream, and it can offer you know the drama it can give you know it can i was thinking of a game just then that brought to mind we played chelsea in the in the cup and um it was like well i think we we're in the first division and we i think we went two nil up or maybe two one we ended up losing four two but i was with all my mates and um i had a few beers a few too many beers and uh, i ended up stealing the christmas tree out of the um and reception at Chelsea, <laughs> so I so I was running, I was sort of running down the the King's Road with a tree, and I could hear that you know the sort of the 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 um, Christmas light plug, you know, shaking. 
And then like the stewards tapping me like, "Oh mate, you, you you've got our Christmas tree." And I was like, "Ah, oh, sorry, mate, but, you know." But you know, like that is that thing where that story came from. But it's just that thing of football where you just go, you sort of lose your mind, don't you? Because we were we were at one point we were winning, and it's like we're going to beat Chelsea now, and then you know you yeah. end up losing four two. I mean, when you were following Leicester City in the early years, where you were following them through, let's put it bluntly, thin and thin. Yeah. If somebody said to you then, listen, one day you'll win the Premier League, you'll be in the Champions League and you'll see them win the FA Cup, what would you have said to that person? Yeah, I'd said you're completely out of your mind. There's absolutely no way. That was, that was, that's the talk of an of a insane football fan. Do you know what I mean? That's not, that's not what happens in real life. I think a lot of people forget in that incredible season where they did it, the ultimate, how close you were to being relegated it's, the season before. Exactly, I know. The story really starts there. Was, was it 10 games to go? Or It was... Uh, now, I spoke to a couple of people in the last few days because I'm you know, obviously delighted you were coming on. Yeah. And they actually credit you with helping the run start. What's, no way. Yep. Uh, it was home to West Ham and you and Tom oh, went yeah. down on the pitch. That's right. And you sang the Esteban Cambiasso song. I did, song. I did, Esteban. And it got the crowd lifted. They mm. were in a terrible run, and I think you won seven out of the nine. That's it, yeah. I remember that. I remember singing that song. Was that, was that just impromptu? Yeah, were you just... yeah, yeah. They asked, we were watching and um, just got... Uh, we, so one of the stewards came over, or, or, you know, people that work there, and said, look, could you go on on a half-time? It's like, yeah, of course. What Do what? It's like, whatever you want, just kind of try and get the crowd going. Because <laughs> it was so flat, wasn't it? Yeah, and you yeah. were staring yeah. down the barrel of yeah. relegation. Yeah, wow, yeah. That was huge, yeah. Well, they say you had a big part in uh, it. Well, that's massive. So come on then. Let's, let's, let's get to it. When the season started to unfold, Claudio Ranieri and the most incredible, I always describe them as band of brothers, as, as a team, as a collection of individuals. At what point did you start to think, hang on, this could happen? I mean, definitely when we beat Man City away was, was a... There were so many big moments in that, in that season. And... You always, you know, you're always waiting for, like any, you know, to have a few. You're always waiting for that moment where this could be the week, and maybe we draw. Or you're thinking, okay, it's, we did so well, you know, we might get the Champions. Yeah, but the, with all due respect, this is Leicester City. Winning the Premier League is way off of the radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're no, looking at survival. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not even. That's what I mean. It was just. It's. It's so hard to sort of describe because it, it's so alien like you just can't it's, you can't get your you just can't get yourself in that especially like I said from going from nowheresville you know <laughs> relegation to the year before like the dream was to just finish 17th 16th you know let's just stay in the league were you reluctant to almost get drawn into believing because you th I, I don't want to start believing because I'd be so disappointed okay. if we don't. I think, yeah, I mean... What was the internal battle like? My, my friend, Mikey, right, he's, he's a, he, he likes a bet. And at Christmas, he said, look, you're 100 to 1. I'm going to have 100 quid on it. I'm in the bookies now. I'll put yours on. I went, mate, don't. He went, what do you mean? I said, look, I'll, I, if I bet on it, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? That's, yep. So that's where I was. Like, I wasn't like, yeah, this I can really truly believe. I'm like thinking, well, if I, like, as if my bet's going to, change the fate of it but it but it was just yeah it's, it, that Man City game and then we played I think it was Swansea at home and I we we booked the stadium to we were going to play the stadium in 2017 the album the album was going to come out and then we we're going to play the stadium and I rang my manager after the Swansea game and said, we need to move that gig because we're going to win the league and we don't want to be playing next year because we might get relegated. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we, we need to move that, move that gig forward because I think this is going to happen. And like, imagine the atmosphere if a few weeks after the, 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 we win it, that we get to play the gig, you know. 
so that's that's that was the moment where it's like right okay this is a risk because you put this gig on don't win the league but it, it, you know we just celebrated the Champions League as you know so I think it was just mad because every game we're winning every game and you didn't and then like weird things like Okazaki like bring him off at 60 minutes I mean the guys scored like I think he got like one assist and four goals and he won the league you think those stats are just insane but he but that but whatever he did like there was was little weird little things that were perfect it it was very much a squad game yeah wasn't it that was the thing about it it wasn't I mean Jamie Vardy got the majority of the headlines Mm -hmm. but if ever there was a team where the sum of the parts was far greater than the individual, surely it was that team. I know, like a rigid four four two, um, Danny Simpson hoof, like you know, Fuchs. It's just it was it, yeah, crazy. And and then, so but you, you have to you remember were, like well, now let's, let's do it. So Schmeichel, Simpson, Simpson, uh, Hooth, Hooth, Big Wes. I mean, where's Morgan? Like, of all the players, <laughs> like Barese, you know. Like, Mag- magnificent. Uh, unbelievable. Fuchs on the Fuchs, left. Then all Brighton. Kante. Kante. Drink water. Drink, I mean. Mares. Yeah, yeah. and in that. Vardy. And then Joe or Okazaki. But the thing, thing is as well, Mares, like, won PFA Player of the Year that year. Like, he was, when you, like... I mean, when I put that highlights, there's a great documentary where you can watch the season. Have you I watched put, it? I put it on a lot. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've not. I've got it on. Like if if my, I've got a li- like little pool table, like that goes. That just goes on. And Mares was like, because it's like okay, you know, it was a fairy tale, great team. But he would like he. We had like the best. I mean, we had the Premier League's best player, which you know, for mm. a team like this. He was ridiculous. His talent and his he's just he was unbelievable, unplayable. Mm. Um and then yeah, the last month or so, talking about football, what it can do like to a community. Honestly, the the vibe in the city was I got goosebumps thinking about it. Just everywhere you went, everyone was just high, high as hell. It was amazing. Like you go into like you know, take his school or whatever, all the parents going to the post office, everyone's like just buzzing. I mean it was it was crazy, honestly. Well it was a global story as I well. No, I know, you could see you could feel that from from all over the world. It, it was the ultimate minnows um overcoming the giants. Yeah. Particularly in terms of size of the club. And also the financial resources as well. For all the people were cynical about how if you spend the most money, of course, you've come out of the top team. This was the antidote to all the cynicism. And at right at the centre of it, you had Claudio Ranieri, this wonderful, bespectacled uh, Italian coach who'd seen it all, done it all, been everywhere, hadn't won that many trophies himself. No. So we've got all this. Bedlam going on, all the noise. He was this extraordinary figure of calm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that he was doing so well and he's Italian because of your roots, well, yeah, you must have just thing. loved it. You know, again, that's the sort of mad, you know, the 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 story. You know, it's like that that element as well is huge for me. So where, you must remember where you were the night they won it because obviously it was yeah. Chelsea at home to Tottenham. Chelsea at home, and I had everyone came around to mine, all my pals. The same, you know, the, the lads I've been mates with since primary school, you know what I mean? And we've been going down, up and down the country, whatever, since we're teenagers. And then, we, so we're at mine, and we this is this is like the, the still, you know, that mentality of this is not going to happen. So, did show. Spot, did Tottenham go one up or? It was it was Battle of the Bridge, wasn't it? it finished two two. I'm it? sure they went. Tottenham were winning though I'm, at some point. I'm sure. Anyway, Chelsea went, uh, no, two nil up. that's right. So two 0 up, we ordered a curry because we like going. We're not celebrating tonight. Was at the game. <laughs> we're not celebrating tonight. Two 0 up. Just let's just have a curry. We'll, we've got Man United. We can probably was that. I think. Well, we just played Man. Anyway, that was the the kind of you know what I mean. We'll, we'll, we'll just it. watch the game. We'll just watch the game. Have interest, but we won't win the title tonight. Exactly. 
This massive curry arrives on the table. All of a sudden, it's 2 1. Yeah, maybe leave the food. Don't like, we might need it, might be having a drink tonight. And then Hazard scores that, like, wonder goal. And the net, I can't, the next thing I know, it's like a flash, and I'm stood outside King Power. It's one in the morning with all my mates, and we're all singing. Someone's on the top of a ITV van, you know what I mean? Like we just we just down the ground. It's like this, you know, like bat sign, you know what I mean? You just like get in the car, get straight down to the ground. And there was thousands of us there till God knows when. Just outside the ground. It's just like I need to be somewhere, I need to go somewhere, I need to be surrounded by people that are feeling the same as me at this point. How does that buzz compare with say I don't know, headlining Glastonbury. Up there with it? It's a similar it's a similar feeling of not really like that's like surreal. It's a similar feeling of being so like buzzed and heart like just just off the off light. You know what I'm saying? You're just in an, another world, I suppose. And you get that same feeling when you come up, especially doing something that big, pressure's on, you do a gig and it's great. It's, it's that thing of the energy, like the energy of a crowd. When you stood in front of 100,000 people, it goes somewhere and, it, you know, you, then you sort of, it sort of, you absorb it, I suppose. So after the gig, you just kind of, you sort of, you, you're crazy, you know. And it's a similar thing with that. The energy of all those people and that willing a team to, and actually doing it. And then, you know, it's, it's a very similar feeling. I mean, was it the ultimate? To, to play at Victoria Park on the victory parade when your team had just won the Premier League. I, I think at the time the population of Leicester was about 350,000. There was about 380,000 yeah. at the park. <laughs> yeah, though it was. It was, yeah, just to be a part of it was such an honour, you know. And, like, that's the, you know, that was the, that was the thing. We were so, it was just like, wow, we're, we, not, not only are we... No, is this our team? We, you know, we're part of this celebration. I've got photos of like me and my two boys with, you know, Wes Morgan, the boys holding the Premier League, pictures with Ranieri, you know, and, th- and that's the side of the stage as well. Do you know what I mean? So, it's just before we went on, like it's just wild and seeing like Vards there bouncing around, and they're all obviously they're all pretty drunk. Do you know what I mean? So it's funny. You know what I mean? And they're all like, it was just. Yeah, great. I love the fact you open with underdog as well. I mean, that's that's it now. It's the theme tune, right? For that, for that. <laughs> it was just it's an inspired choice, yeah, wasn't it? An yeah. absolutely inspired choice, and also as well to be the first band to play the King Power as well. Mm. I mean, you, you're the most obvious band, but as a Leicester fan, was that a big thrill for you? Yeah, and it was maybe a few weeks after the end of the season, so that it was like. Yeah, it was, the, the, the pie kept going and, and the atmosphere was, you know, it was, you could feel, still feel that, uh, you know, we had Ranieri, like we had a sample of Ranieri. And one of the match of the days could have been the Sunderland game, uh, one of the early games. He mentioned us in a match of the day interview and he said like, we got to play like a Sabian or, so, you know, and we had that, we sampled that and we started the gig with that, you know, so... What did you make of that when you heard that? I mean, everyone, all my mates was going, what is going on? Like, you're on Match of the Day. It's like, Ranieri sort of <laughs> shouted you out. <laughs> yeah, great, amazing. He was brilliant. The way he just kept the lid on it. Dilly ding, dilly dong. I know, man, that was just phenomenal, wasn't it? It, just, if it, and it, and it The whole time, so me, touchline reporter, for instance, you're going to do it, you're going to do it. He says, no, no, first target is top six. No, no, yeah. Next target top, I mean... I'm like a broken record, like all the reports. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Yeah, He just yeah. didn't go anywhere near it. No, no. He kept all the pressure off the players. Yeah, yeah, he did that beautifully. I think that was probably his, you know, like his, 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 his the real strength, you know, in, in his the way he dealt with all of that. And he seemed to, yeah, like, there was a humour to it. There was a, there was mm. just a, you know. Charming. Exactly. The charming and, man. And I think that, that really, you know, you know, all, all of that really helped. But this time, were you, I'm presuming you were fairly friendly with the players anyway at this stage. Were you starting to message 
yeah, I knew like uh, Jamie came to uh, we did a gig at Victoria Park a couple of years before, yeah, two years before, and he came to that. So, uh, and you know, I sort of exchange numbers, and then so I, you know, every now and again, I, you know, what I mean, like it, it, a tech, if he'd scored a decent, I don't want to be on top, you know, what I mean, on a mither in, but you know, so it was like so towards the end of the season, and when he kept scoring, I'm like, oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> when he broke Van Nistelrooy's record, no, that was uh, uh, that was phenomenal. That was absolutely. I just phenomenal. think of Martin Tyler. It's seven. He's in heaven. Yeah, brilliant line. Brilliant. Absolutely. And the Fuchs pass as well, like that. The non-look pass. Yeah. You watch that back. That I mean, that was the season we were having. The 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 through ball, the assist was a non-look pass by right back. I I just that whole team, everything about them, and um, Kante's work mm. rate was. Yeah, I mean, again, that was like where that came from. I'm just trying to remember who was Claudio's assistant manager. Went Shakespeare. To, and who else was there? It was Craig Shakespeare. I think it, I, it was Craig. It's Craig said to me. So it's Mark McCard beforehand. He said, "We're well, actually we're going to play three in the middle." So I said, "Oh right." He said, "Yeah." He said, "We're going to play Danny Drinkwater with Kante either side of him." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, that was a good line. <laughs> it was like that though, wasn't it? Just, just mop everything well, up. And, and he was, when he first came, he weren't great. It wasn't like, oh, we found some special. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure about it. No, he was it's too small and like he's not, it's not strong enough. And then it's just like he became just, I mean, he was unbelievable. It was, do you think you'll ever, do you think you'll ever experience anything like that again? Uh, you can't say no, like you can't say no because we it, it's always possible, but I mean the odds are probably more than five thousand to one. My my wife's uncle won eighty grand. He had twenty quid. He has twenty quid on it every year. Leicester are going to win the league, and he was in Skeggy with all his mates, and he went, "I'm twenty quid Leicester on the nose, <laughs> five thousand to one, bang." Oh, I mean, we all talk about the 5,000 to 1, but not many people know anybody who backed it at yeah, 5,000 yeah. to 1. Crazy. There, there weren't many takers. No. But if, you, but if you think of all of the components of that, your hometown, your team you've supported since you were a kid, them winning the Premier League, your band being the soundtrack to them winning, being referenced by their players and manager, playing a home coming gig, playing the stadium. Does life get any better? I know. No, now you say it out loud, it's like you do, you do, that's a, yeah. I don't know what, I have no words for that because it's like, it's the fairy tale, isn't it? Yeah, that I think that's the beauty, isn't it? Yeah. It is the fairy tale. Um, I, was th I was thinking about Kasabian and yourself as well, ahead of today, and you've evolved, constantly changed musically, Wise always challenge yourself, and Kasabian. Of traditionally, there's been comings and goings, personnel-wise across the journey as well. You're almost like the team itself. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. There's definitely that. There must be that's just ingrained in the fabric of being from Leicester or whatever. But we know, you know, I, I sort of lived there forever. Didn't move down to London for a bit, maybe a few months, but Leicester's home. And then there's something about the place that is ingrained in the music as well. Well, you've got um, another album out this summer, and also you've got a massive gig as well in Leicester mm. once again. What made you decide to play Victoria Park once again? It's coming up 10 years since we did it before. We were supposed to do it before lockdown. Uh, and then obviously, you know, that happened. So it was always the plan. Um, and then it's like new album seems perfect. I think, I don't know, it's just not, the city needs another big night again. I think it, it's time. Now, I can't let you go without talking about your two, probably the most talked about moments in terms of your career, your football career. Old Trafford with Soccer Aid and Soccer AM. Your incredible strike. Which one do people bring up the most with you? <laughs> um, it's pretty close, but 
But probably, I mean, the Soccer Aid one shades it a little, but it's pretty close. They mention that the most. Soccer Aid goal, yeah. I mean, like... Let's 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 go back. Let's go back. I'll go back into touchline reporter mode. Okay, come you on. You go into striker mode. Yeah. Um, with the world worn cliche. By the way, I never used to say this. Talk us through your goal. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Uh, so, I'm on the left side. Um, Old Trafford, eighty thousand full house. And back's not in the best condition. So Freddie Lundberg's got the ball and he's played it through. I've kept my, I've held my run, kept on side, played it through. Now, I can't remember the defender, but the defender's quick. It could have been Des Walker, I don't know. But it was, you know I'm, I'm, in, my back's in a condition, I'm not going around. I'm not going around him anyway, but it's, it's certainly not. So as soon as, as, soon as the ball's in, in like left Lundberg's foot, I'm going, I'm going to hit this because I'm not getting around him. And I, I noticed... David Seaman was just a little bit off his line, so I thought I, I'm just gonna just dink this. And and that Henri where you open your body out. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, you know, you have it in your head what you want to do, never works out, but this time I hit it, and I've seen as a hit, I thought, you know what, that's gone in. And it's touched the net, and it was like, you know, like I'd went into another dimension. The adrenaline just bang, just hit me. And I, I always thought, I had to sort of what I'd do if I scored, but at that point, your mind's gone. I mean, this is like a charity game. Imagine if you scored in the World Cup, you'd be, I don't know what you'd do. So I turn around, and then like, Clarence Seedorf was there, Freddie Lundberg, Mike Myers, <laughs> and then Will Farrell. And I was like, does this <laughs> get any weirder? Like those three, like, you know, and that that was in, that was just, yeah, and, and, I just remember walking back to the pitch, going like back to the centre circle, and for the five minutes after that, I could have like ran through a brick. Like, I, I was so it was just I can't imagine what I said. If you scored it as a proper goal. So I mean, soccer is, is fantastic, but what was it like for you playing alongside real legends of football? And I mean, you'd be comfortable in the world of entertainment, but when you've got literally gods of the game and. Was Kenny Dalglish your manager? Yes. Who was, who was your... Kenny Dalglish was absolutely incredible. Like, Were you overawed at all? Big time. I mean, absolutely big time. Nervous? Roy, Roy Were you Ke- nervous? Roy Ke- yeah, very, very. Yeah, but you've played in front of 100,000 people. It's, it's just because you're out of your comfort zone with that. That's their arena. And you're just like, Roy Keane was amazing. He was sat having breakfast the first day. And he was like, first day having breakfast. I thought... I could either sit on this table or I might, I might, I'm just going to have to do it. So I got breakfast and sat next to him, got chatting, so sound. And I had some white boots, like, and he was like, you best be good in them. You know what I mean? One of them, you best be able to play in them. And when I, when, when I came back in from the change room after the half time, I was, I was literally like Conor McGregor. I was walking, you know what I mean? I felt like Strut. absolutely strutting. And he, he got injured and he was on the, you know, the physio table. Oh, treatment table. Yeah, and he, I walked in, and they were, everyone was in, and he went, "That was a cross, wasn't it?" <laughs> I, was, I was like, "Mate, come on, please!" I'm having a moment. Was he laughing? Here. Yeah, he's buzzing. <laughs> he had that right little snot. You know how he is. Just comedy timing was just perfection. But I would be sat in the the dressing room, Yapstam, uh, Sadov, Keen, and they were talking about Champions League days and. You know, just like they're all just exchanging stories, and I'm just sort of sat there, just going, "Wow!" I've, I've, a long, a long time and several stone ago, I used to play in sort of uh, games where with great players, and it's when when they say to you, "Right, you just do this, that, and the other," you're terrified of letting them down. Yeah, aren't oh yeah, you? God, yeah, yeah. No, you, you honestly, like like you're a proper kid. But I mean, you know, you no, know, Kenny Dalglish was so like he, we, like he's probably the coolest. He just owned it, like, and the first day of training, it was an early call at half seven, like, and everyone's like, you know, I mean, you this treat you so well. I mean, you get, you literally get to live the oh, fantasy. Tra- Listen, Kenneth Shepherd, is who, un- he's who, an absolute who, legend. Ken- like, Kenneth he's the- given me some of the best days of my life. I'll yeah, never Ken- ever, you know, be thankful to that guy. Ken- Kenneth is, is a palomizer, terrific guy, and the 
he says, we, you know, we we treat them like professional it footballers. It's unreal. So, so you've got all the gear on, tracksuit, all the things you've dreamt of, and everyone's on the bus. And it's like half seven, quarter to eight, eight o'clock, waiting for Kenny Dalglish, because apparently he was at the bar. You know, the stories circulate. Kenny was at the bar last night. So he got on about half eight, about an hour late, sunglasses... <laughs> His hair was all wet and he walked past and then Ian Rush turned around to everyone and went, that's why they call him the king. <laughs> I was just like, this is the best day of my life. I was absolutely going, yes, Kenny, like the man. What about Wayne Rooney? I'm delighted to say we've announced today, this year, Legends of Football will be Wayne Rooney and Farrah Williams. But in the studio that day of Soccer Aid, on your goal, he said, to be honest with you, it's one of the best goals we've seen at Old Trafford for probably ten years. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I should clip that up because he, he did actually. Have you say ever spoken that. to him about it? Do you know what? I, I, I big music him, fan. Wayne. Met him br- briefly uh, after. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I need to clip that up because that's pretty good. <laughs> now, what about your other iconic moment? Which uh, I spoke to a friend of mine yesterday, Darius, who was a producer on Soccer AM for so many years, and he said, it is without doubt the most iconic moment in the 28-year history of Soccer AM, where you flicked up that ball nonchalantly and just went bang through the hole in the B of Wembley. Yeah. that We we played in Paris the night before, and, um, it's you know, night over, so we'd had a few, we were having a few beers on the back of the bus. And if one of them look at the watch, a few beers, it's like, mm, probably should get to bed. It's like half oh, five. And then we got soccer AM. Then what time does it start? Oh, you got to be there at like seven. It's like, oh, shit, we may as well, you know. So we'd had, we definitely had a few beers. And at that point, I said, I'm just going to try something tomorrow on that. And I thought about it because I'd done it before and I'd messed it. I tried a Rabona. It was awful. Thank God no one ever shows that. Like, like really didn't get any power into it. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Of course it is. <laughs> I was like, so I, thought, I all in my, always in my mind. So I love that show, and it was like, you got to do something, you got to try something. You, and so it was like, right, that's the one. Because if you get the timing right on that, and when I flicked it up, it just went just off to the right. It was the perfect flick off because it was just off to the right. And interestingly about that, you know how sort of miss travel and how things get like remembered differently through history it's said that I had winkle pickers on now I never owned a pair of winkle pickers like in my life which is people might say you did but I didn't honestly I've never had a pair of winkle pickers maybe some Chelsea boots that might be important but they weren't winkle pickers I had like Clark's desert boots on because I purposely knew that they were the sort of coolest shoes that you could have without looking like you're desperate because you don't want to turn up with Copa Mondi do you know what I mean? You can't no, look like you're too serious about it. You can't be full kit wanker. You, exactly. <laughs> you've got to make sure you've got you still got your star. So I had Clark's desert boots on, not Winkle Pickers. So that I reckon that helped. Ah, so the impression of this nonchalant rock band frontman turning up and just casually banging one in, actually there was a bit of forethought wasn't oh, there? I wanted that I wanted that big time that yeah but could you have believed it have come off that well <laughs> no I only regret not leaving that I because I, I I left the car park took my coat off it was a mic drop moment wasn't it was it? and then I should have just kept on walking I could have walked home I, I was like my, my phone was like went off the this was before really before sort of viral you know what I mean it was kind of before that so but my phone all that all that day was just like just went off the hook Darius, when they did the the last ever show, I think G- uh, Jimmy Bullard was on, uh, Stormzy was on, and they you know they said this is the most iconic moment in this show's history. That's mad. Let's recreate it. None of them could get anywhere near it. No. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing like. No way. Nothing like. So, how much are you looking forward to this year? Because it is a big year for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like so excited. I mean, you know, we a huge Leicester gig. This new record is like it's it's so, it, it's so proud of it, and it's like some massive, massive tunes on it. Like some tunes that all sort of will be, you know, that will last, 
that's the test of time, you know what I mean? And then obviously the 20 year, we've got a 20 year anniversary of the first album. So it's like a, it's just a huge year for us. How much would it add to the year if we see Leicester City back in the Premier League? Uh, that would definitely help things for sure. Yeah. Well, you... I, I, I think, you know, I'd like to think that we're going to have enough to just get over the line. Well, These next two games, two away games, are very important, I think. They're going well. They've got an Italian in charge. You're playing Leicester this summer. Omens are pretty good. <laughs> they are. They do point to uh, it being good this year. Oh, so thank you so much for coming. Really, Amazing. really appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, hearing all about, well, but it's well known your love of the Foxes, but in terms of what I would say being a proper fan, you... Absolutely, number one. Amazing, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Serge. Cheers. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Next time, Jamie Redknapp told us all about Robbie Williams hiding out at his place when he left Take That and travelling on the Liverpool team bus. Also, the power of you'll never walk alone as a player and an impromptu party with Ed Sheeran that went on for quite some time.